What's up everybody? My name is Matthew. Um, some of you know me by Demigod. I've been playing lots of games like this for a long time. Um, so let's jump into it. Um, today, and for a lot of my future videos, we're going to be tackling Hustle Castle. I'm not sure if any of you have played it. Um, it's medieval, kind of almost like a Fallout Shelter. It's great. Um, I, I've already at up to level 27. All right, so first thing I want to talk about today in Hustle Castle, um, which seems to be everybody's struggle, um, is going to be breeding. Um, how to get your five stars, how to get, you know, past that point. Explain what they do for you and why it's important you have them. So, I'll go ahead and I'll start down here at our living room. Um, obviously, the living room is where you can put a male and female. Obviously, they'll do their thing. <laughs> and they'll have themselves a baby. Um, what I've noticed is if you do a three and a three, the chance to get a four is... I would say roughly around 20 percent um 20 to 30 so and that's for everything it kind of goes all the way so you do a three star and a three star and you wait and you wait and you wait and eventually one of those babies that they give out will potentially be a four star um and etc you can you know you do the fours and then you do a four and a three star and you wait and you wait and you wait and then eventually you'll get another four star then you take your two four stars, you let them do their thing, so on and so forth. Then you get the five star. Then you do the five with the four and the five sub fives, and then all of a sudden you're breeding five master, right? So that's what you want to do. Um, what's important about these stars? You know, that's what everybody's kind of like, what do they do? Well, if you click on the player, and you see, notice over here where their stars are, there's this little orange box. If you click on it, it says, this dweller's potential equals five stars. The training limit for their class equals 100 points. A greater potential means a higher class and a training limit. Um, so not only can you train them up to level 100 when they're five stars, you can also do their classes. For instance, um, for the food, for the gold, um, for the wood for the steel, for the ore, um, whichever. And that goes all the way. So if you were to go ahead and click on, say, I don't know, uh, I'm not sure how many three stars I have left, guys. Honestly, I've kind of burned through that. Um, well, here, he's a four star. This will work. So four stars, they can only go up to 80. Three stars can only go up to 60. Two stars can only go up to 40. And of course, one star can only get a maximum potential of 20 for a level. And again, those levels are for your fighters, for the people that produce the gold, people that produce the food, um, the people that produce your mana, all of that stuff. So it's all very important. And eventually, it is going to get to a point where you're going to need all five stars. You're not going to be able to live in this you know, castle with a bunch of three stars or a bunch of four stars, you're going to hit your max potential. You're not going to be able to get up over the right levels. So it's very important that you stay on breeding and trying to increase the amount of five stars that you hold. So that's very important. <clears throat> Second thing I want to jump into today is your team. Now, a lot of people run a different setup, lots of different setups. I've seen tons. Personally, I like the two tanks, two mages, and then when you get up to five, you might be able to mix in a few other things. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in and talk about some of the, the, the differences between them. So when you have your tanks, your tanks are developed to take the most amount of damage possible. 
they have the most health and the most armor, the most magic armor. Um, they don't deal a crazy amount of damage, but definitely enough to know that they're there. Um, you can, of course, put accessories on them. And you'll want to keep those accessories um, in the damage, dodge, or critical category. You don't want to really add anything with magic damage or spell power. Because they don't really do anything for that. So those specifically you want to use for your mages. And that's what we'll go into next. So the mages, <clears throat> their whole thing is based off from spell power and magic damage. Now the spell power, if you click on your weapon, it'll tell you that it gives you some of the spell power into the effect of the item. So for instance, this one says once in a while it restores 1,488 health, but it also gives you 4,218 of the spell power, which gets added into that. So you get a total whopping of, let's see, six almost six thousand health that's a lot i mean definitely comes in handy i know that much so these are the people that you want to use your spell power ones on your magic um damage on those are important all right let's jump over to this one because i know i skipped by it um so this is a very unique setup that a lot of gamers have found that have worked great for them they're taking the archer armors. Now the archer category, they're balanced so they don't have a lot of health. Mm. Excuse me. But they're able to deal a lot of damage. And it's damage per second, which is important. Um, DPS, that just tackles everything when it comes to PvP. Um, you want to be able to do the most amount of damage possible, obviously. Um, archers have the ability to do that in the back where they're not able to be targeted um, but they do have less health same with the mages they are able to sit on the back they don't have as much health um, but they're able to do cool things such as resurrect your tanks um, heal them do a little bit of splash damage here and there depending on the weapon but that's really important that everybody understands the differences between them. You don't want to mix up these armors. You don't want to have a tank suited up with an armor with a little wand. It ain't going to do nothing for you. It's just not efficient. So you'll want to keep things the same. Mage armor with a mage weapon. Tank with a tank weapon. Archer with an archer weapon. Um, except for this in particular moment here where I'm about to go over this um, because it is pretty neat so what happens is this archer armor gives you a mass amount of damage it allows you to deal damage per second um, and what you do is you go ahead and switch over to these steel daggers right any dagger really um, these ones are just the ones that I have but what happens is they deal a lot of damage per second as well. And if you click right here, you'll notice that the attack speed says fast. That's another big kicker that a lot of people didn't realize. All these different weapons have different attack speeds. And you're going to want to find one that works the best for you and your team. And you're going to want a dagger with an archer armor because the results are just overpowered. Um, as you can see here, the damage per second is 4,469, okay? Now, if I switch that out right now, say for, I don't know, a bow, you know, which is what he's supposed to have, it brings him down to 2,238 damage. That's, like, a big difference, all right? And when you click on this... It's got normal attack speed, just like the other one. It's going to be the same speed of attacking and everything like that. The only difference is, is with the bow, he's in the back. Um, he's not up on the front line. But when you put these daggers on him, 
this this gives him the tank feel, um, which puts him up on the front line. He doesn't have as much health as your tanks, but he deals almost more than double the damage that they do. So why don't I show you? Why don't we go ahead and we'll do a quick battle. Let me just pop some bubbles here and uh, get rid of this rat, I guess. <laughs> rat invasion, you gotta scare him off with a kitty. Oh, where's my cat? Eh, she ain't around. At least I know what to do if a big old rat ever comes into my home and tries to attack me. So let's go ahead and take a look at an enemy here. Let's see if I might be able to battle this guy. Whoa, 440. You know, it's just too much for me. Look at all those legendaries. Yeah, that's a lot of legendaries. I'm not going to go after this guy yet. Um, that's exactly what my goal is. Before I go ahead and upgrade my throne room again, I'm going to be pretty much trying to legendary everything. Get all my five stars. Get everybody all trained up to where they need to be. Uh, you know, it's not showing me a lot of um, a lot of people I can attack, guys. I do apologize. Maybe I'll be able to change the opponent. That might work. I'm gonna get some coffee because it's about that time. Man, this one too. Up to 409 with this five people. And I tell you, when you got about five people and you're up to the 400,000 for a squad power, you are definitely beasting out the right way. You are doing things right. That is what you want to look for. Now, I didn't really want to dedicate this in particular um, video to people who are up to where I am. I really wanted to dedicate this video to people who are just starting off. Learning the basics, alright? Um, I'm not able to show you guys how great of an attack that is set up for the archer with the tank weapon. Um, I will get some gameplay in maybe a little bit later, um, show you guys how that works. But I want to jump back into a few other important things um, for some of you beginners. Another great thing that you guys want to focus on is crafting. All right, crafting is super important in this game. Um, you're, you have the ability to craft your weapons, your armor, your jewelry, um, and not just find it in, in chests. Um, man, I don't know how many times I've opened a bunch of chests. They don't give you jack crap. Alright, a bunch of commons, a bunch of uncommons. Very rarely do you ever get a rare. Um, I've never, ever gotten an epic drop. Um, especially for like a weapon or armor, um, that I didn't have to buy with my own gems. Um, if it was something that I earned off from a battle or through the storyline, I've you're not going to get an epic, guys. So just don't hold your breath for that. Um, but what's important with these crafting is you break all those crappy items down. They give you a bunch. So when the world gives you lemons, what do you do with it? You make lemonade. Right, folks? Yeah, that makes sense. So you just break them all down. Get all your shards. Go ahead and start upgrading, like, uh, crafting things like crazy. I mean, don't even stop crafting. I'll, I'm always crafting stuff, because why not? You can always have something better. If I craft a bunch of my commons that I broke down into uncommons, and then I break all of those down, and I break, you know, I craft a bunch of rare items, and then I break all of those rare items down, I'm able to make a bunch of epic items. And that only, that step only goes another step further. Once I have enough epic items you know, that I'm not using, I'm going to break them down, and I'm going to make myself a legendary item, because who wouldn't? Makes sense. It's a, it's, it's a vicious cycle. This game was made to really test your patience. Um, the breeding, the waiting for rooms to upgrade, your people to upgrade, which is super long. 
I think my guys right now are up to like eight hours a level, which is like, you know what I'm saying? So, it's really made to test your patience. Um, so craft, 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 craft your items, get them, get the best that you can, don't stop crafting, upgrade your rooms, make sure that you're getting the right levels. Um, it's all very important. Um, next thing we'll jump into is your spells. Spells are super important. Um, I can't tell you how many times they've saved my rear end. Um, I just, last night, finally got this room upgraded and uh, I unlocked the icy spell. I only got to use it once. I really needed it in a in the battle that I was in and it won. It worked. It, it worked out perfectly. I ended up winning. I was happy. Um, but let's go ahead and run over the spells real quick, shall we? Alright, so here we have, of course, the magic orb. The original, shall we? Um, magic orb hits one of the enemies, dealing 6,500 damage. It's a good amount of damage, considering, you know, your archers, your mages probably only have upward to about 20,000 health. So, that's about a quarter of their health taken right off. Um, you bring two of those in the battle, it's like half their health. Um, we'll go into my favorite, the Lion Spirit. Um, I use this almost all the time. It increases the damage done by your allies um, for a certain amount of time. Mine's upgraded to level 3, <clears throat> so it's by 35% for 20 seconds. That does a big, big significance in the middle of our battle. When I'm rushing in and my guy drops for the first time and I bring him back to life with a resurrect, I usually love to hit the spell right then because then it's like an extra boost and they just kind of rush right through and, and if they're able to break down that tank line and get up to those uh, mages and take down their mages then I know I'm all good because then there's no more resurrecting, there's no more restoring, um, it's basically like you win, right? Um, next we'll go into this Cliff's Totem. Cliff's Totem is another one that I use a lot, especially in the storyline. Um, it reduces the damage that your allies take in battle by 15% for 10 seconds. Um, it absorbs all of the damage. It doesn't take it off from your health, which is also not something that's really helpful because um, you're able to save some of your health. Um, I feel like that one kind of goes hand in hand with the healing ray because you're able to absorb the damage and then right after you can go ahead and hit this healing ray and it restores 6500 health again folks that's a quarter of somebody's health in your 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 squad so that's important a quarter is a lot um this one is the summon ally um it gives you an orc kind of archer that sits in the back next to yours and kind of just just shoots away um, gets as much damage as it can um, and kind of really does help out. I've actually had this spell um, when I first got it. I wasn't too sure about it. I, you know, tested it here and there. But since then, I've actually grown fond of this spell. Um, it's great if you hit it very first, like right off from the start. Um, that way, it, it's almost like you have an extra person the whole time. Um, so you're just kind of like... Pew, pew, pew. And everybody else is doing their job. Um, you got your two mages, um, you got your two tanks going to work, and then you got this archer in the back just killing it, right? So that's important. It's another one that gives you a little bit more damage per second, especially adding to another person to the squad. Um, this one, again, like I just said, I unlocked this one last night, so I'm kind of learning it a little bit. Um, the Icy Trap hits all enemies, rendering them unable to fight for two seconds doesn't seem like a lot folks but I'm telling you right now two seconds is all it takes <laughs> I hit this this spell last night on a level that I was stuck on and the mages in it were just they chewed you right down it was so so bad so frustrating you know you just couldn't get anywhere it was almost like you stood no chance 
And I just unlocked it and said, you know what? I'll bring one in with me and we'll see how, if it changed anything. Well, I'll be darned. It did. I froze up those mages. They couldn't do that damage to me anymore. I was able to rip through the tanks really fast. Um, got right to the mages, took them down. Um, I think I ended up hitting the lion spirit like just as I hit up to the mages because I didn't want to like give them that extra second to come back. And uh, I beasted right through it. I ended up destroying it um, by a long shot. Which So it's so strange how one thing can change the outcome of a whole battle. I was getting smoked on that level, guys. Absolutely smoked. I wasn't getting very far at all. I wasn't even breaking through their tanks. Um, their tanks would maybe have like a little bit of health left, and then I'd all die. So that really makes the difference. One little thing can change the outcome of one battle. And it's really important that you take time to look through the opponents, see what they have, um, what their abilities are, what they do to you, and you're able to counter that. Um, so trial and error, trial and error. It's it's kind of sucks, but you will get it. Trial and error is the best way to go. All right, so... I don't have these two spells yet, guys, so I'm not going to go over those right yet. We'll, we'll get into that at a later time. Make sure make sure you're researching your stuff, guys. Um, researching your spells makes them stronger. That's also very important. I would not suggest upgrading your town hall. Uh, whoa. I've been playing a lot of Clash of Clans, huh? I would not suggest upgrading your throne room. Don't say it again. Your throne room. Until you've upgraded everything else first. Everything. I mean, you can even go to the extent of not upgrading until you have the amount of five stars that you want. It's perfectly fine. Upgrading isn't going to, uh, to hurt you in any way, shape, or form. Definitely do it if you would like. But once you've upgraded, there's no going back. It'll change your opponents. It'll change the people that you get matched up in your tournaments. It'll change all of that. Speaking of, let's wrap into the last thing that I'm going to talk about and we'll end this episode today. Um, last thing I want to talk about is your tournaments and your invasions. Of course, um, I'm sure you guys all know that you can get tickets for your tournament through the invasions. You can get them through completing the watching the ads three times um, and you get a ticket. So it's very easy to accumulate tickets. Um, your arena is right down there at the bottom of your map. Um, so with your tournaments, how I like to play, and I found it to be the most efficient way, is I always attack the bottom people for the first round, the second round, and maybe even the third round, depending on where I am in the bracket. Um, the reason why I do that is because the fourth round and the fifth round are the rounds that you're going to want to accumulate the most points in. So you're going to want to hit up above you. Um, so you're not going to want to be up in the one second or third, first, second or third spot. You're going to want to be down in like fifth or sixth, somewhere around there. That way you hit two spots ahead of you. Um, for the next two rounds, fourth round and fifth round, and you're able to jump up into first, second, or third. Um, that is the most efficient way. I've been playing a lot of these tournaments. I've found that that is probably the best. So attack low, attack low, maybe attack low again for the third round, and then fourth and fifth round, attack high, get as much points as you can, and get up into the brackets. Um, save up your points. I'm going to jump into the store real quick. Um... Artifacts are great, depending on what they are. Um, I personally do not like the bloodlust on a fighter. I don't find um, taking away three quarters of their health to do 90% damage more is effective. Maybe, but maybe if you have like a restore wall, maybe if like both of or two or three of your mages are just restoring constantly, maybe that would work out well for you. I have yet to try it, so I can't really knock it, but to me it just doesn't sound right. I think they might need to fix that a little bit. Um, you get these other ones where this one's a Pearl of Wisdom. It summons a minion with a healing ability. I like those. I think those are a little bit better, um, especially if we're going to go for an artifact. Um, so down here we have some of these items, these mage outfits. 
um, this one does the stasis, um, and the fighter is invulnerable and unable to move or attack, but it, you know, kind of regains its health. I have yet to try it out, guys. Um, I think maybe my next video, maybe uh, I'll save up some points and buy it, and we can all kind of check it out together and see what the pros and cons are. Um, move on on to our famous Pathfinder equipment. Now, I know you guys all know about this. It's the one thing that everybody hates the most, which is the skeleton arm. Once in a while at death summons two skeletons with a bunch of health that do a bunch of damage. This is crap. Alright. When you've got people who are setting this armor up on their front line and they got their mages in the back just resurrecting them, right? They die. They spit out some skeletons. They resurrect. You kill them again. They drop out more skeletons. You can't ever get by it. Another thing that they're going to have to fix here. They've already tried to work with it a little bit, and they started changing it to once in a while. So instead of every time that person died, they dropped skeletons, they did it to once in a while. So if it happens like too, in, too fast in between times of them dying, they won't spit out the skeletons the next time. Um, so as long as you kill them fast enough the second time, uh, they won't drop skeletons. But I find that still to be very challenging especially when you're trying to fight off two skeletons you know you, you got to defeat two skeletons and even if they had another tank there you got to beat off that guy too before you can get to that same person with a skeleton armor otherwise it's just going to start the cycle all over again and honestly it doesn't take long for you to get swamped because of this armor especially if there's two of them on their team so it is very frustrating i I want to say, go ahead, guys, go buy it and try it out for yourself, but don't, because it sucks to everybody else, and I feel like they're going to end up taking it out. Um, I can't say that I haven't done it. I have. So, I take back what I said. Go ahead. Go do it. Get as much trophies as you can. Beast through that tournament as much as you can. Get as many things as you can with it. Because I feel like they're going to end up nerfing the heck out of it, or they're going to take it up completely. Because it is really, really unfair for a lot of the people who grind hard in this game and struggle for their gear. Um, so let's jump down to here. Now, some of you who are in my clan might know um, that my wife also plays. She is a tournament fan. She loves doing these things. She's got tons of tickets all the time. She's got like... 10, 20, 30 tickets all the time. Um, <clears throat> but that's because she does her invasions, she does her ads, she pays attention, which is important. So she beasted through all these tournaments the other day, um, and she was asking me, you know, what should I get in the store? What should I get in the store? I told her to wait. I said, save them all up. Because I saw this great thing down here at the bottom, right? Once you get to a certain point, this master's chest will actually give you legendary items. You won't just have a chance of getting it. You'll actually get it. So that... Who who's, doesn't want a legendary? I know I do. So save them up. And she did. She did. She saved up 8,350 guys. We opened the box up last night. It was great. She ended up getting like three epics that were all really great epics that she could use. Um, she got a legendary um, mace for her tank, um, which stunned the enemy, like, all the time. I mean, very OP. It was definitely worth it. And with what she already has on her other people, she's just going to be a boss now. So I might actually have her come on to my, my, one of my channels and show you guys some of her gameplay. Um, she's really great in tournaments. So, I think that that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. Honestly, I don't really have too many more things to talk about. Oh, one last thing for the tournament. That's right. This chest right here. Now, I'd love to hear some feedback on this, okay? This tournament chest, the royal tournament chest, sorry, is what I should say. Out of all the tournaments I've played and my wife's played, um, or anybody in my clan has played, Nobody's gotten it. 
I would love to hear from some of you in, that are out there watching this video, learning, um, if you've ever gotten one of these royal chests. Um, comment below, hit, hit subscribe because, you know, I'm going to need as many as I can. Um, I'm going to be putting up a lot of videos like this where we're going to go over the details of everything um, and trying to learn all together because that's what this is all about. Was This is a community. We're all going to learn together. Um, we're all going to have fun with the game. And, you know, of course, if you guys want to come and pay me a little visit, come say hi. You know what the clan is. It's Nova USA. Um, currently, we are ranked in regional at 26 so we are coming for the leaderboards we are definitely pushing hard for that um, so come by come by come say hi um, come drop me a hello I saw your video um, or just comment below I'll read all the comments I'll reply to them um, I love to hear your feedback and what maybe I could do next for a video um, so please feel free hit the subscribe button don't forget alright guys peace out Till next time.